Paula, Redrick, it's an absolutely beautiful day for some spring baseball here in the Quad Cities. And if you're coming down to the tonight's River Bandits game, you may notice that some of the further parking lots here in front of Modern Woodman Park are still flooded. They will remain closed, obviously, until that water does recede. In 2019, when the HESCO barriers broke, it sent several feet of water rushing into businesses along here on River Drive. One business owner tells me, while it's kind of scary to be about 20 feet from that temporary flood wall, he believes that the circumstances this year will lend to a different outcome this flood season. Right now in Illinois, if you want to enjoy a cold one, you either have to go to a bar or pick them up at the store. But lawmakers in Springfield want to change that. The Mississippi River continues to wreak havoc. Portions of River Drive continue to be closed, making it kind of annoying and difficult to get down to the parking here at Modern Woodman Stadium. And speaking of parking, a lot of that is still underwater. Dimitri Martin's family held a vigil for him over the weekend, decorating the bench he died on with blue balloons, his favorite color. His brother Terrence and sister Annie say he was a friendly soul who loved talking with and getting to know other people. Oh, behind me, a lot of the smoke has dissipated and they were able to get most of the fire out. One person was sent to the hospital, but again, the chief tells me that he doesn't know what their condition is. And he also mentioned that there will be several families potentially displaced from this fire as the apartment complex did receive heavy fire, smoke and water damage from the response. According to Rock Island City Council documents, at least two license plate readers will be placed here at the base of the Centennial Bridge. The city will join others like East Moline and Comanche and using this technology to fight crime. Well, after one of the biggest wins in school history, the Iowa Hawkeyes are focused on the biggest prize yet, the national championship. Today, children in Moline had an opportunity to attend a babysitting seminar sponsored by the American Red Cross. This class was the first of its kind for the city of Moline and the Red Cross. And while today's class was small, organizers say the lessons being taught were larger than life. Moving over to uh, unions and wages, in the last 18 months, a significant movement of workers demanding livable wages has risen across the country, including an ongoing strike here in Iowa at Case New Holland. What can Congress do to ensure Americans can earn a fair wage for their work? We've all seen it happen, someone running a red light. And last week, it proved deadly at the intersection of Grant Street and the I-74 bridge off-ramp, where police say a man was killed in a crash. TV6 Investigates' Matt Christensen sets cameras near the same intersection this week and tracked just how often drivers ran red lights. Moving over to inflation now, in a move to fight inflation, the Federal Reserve just raised the interest rate by a half percentage point as the prices of everything from gas to groceries is skyrocketing. What could you do as senator to rein in that inflation? Community members from Muscatine and beyond gathering here at Open Heartland in Iowa City, starting search parties for Christian Martinez, using all the sunlight that they can on Tuesday night. His family tells me that they are overwhelmed by the support they've seen so far. We'll be denied before the angels of God. And just to see that all these people are here to support Chris, um, and not just Chris, but the family. Um, and like I said, it's a, it's a big push to keep searching. Martinez's family held a vigil at the Ped Mall in Iowa City before going back out on the hunt for any new leads. His mother, Evelia Salamanca, says she continues to be grateful for her community. Me gustaría que... Sigamos buscando todavía y que estas noticias lleguen hasta donde las, todas las personas puedan ver y me puedan ayudar para seguir buscando a mi hijo. Search volunteer and friend Jalen Sanders remembers bumping into Martinez Friday night, greeting him with a hug. It's crazy that we have to do this in the first place just because I would never in a million years think anything like that would happen to him or anything like he would go missing. The family reached out to the Quad Cities Missing Persons Network for assistance. The organization has access to mapping systems that can predict where a person who may have been under the influence could have wandered. To give us a direction that 50% of individuals in that uh, state of mind would possibly move and go to, uh, and that's the areas that we're searching at the moment. Organizers say over 100 people turned out to help Tuesday night. Salamanca says she will continue to pray alongside her family. Tengo la esperanza de que lo pueda ver todavía vivo, pero solo mi Dios sabe qué es lo que me, lo que él va a hacer con él. Y... 
Now, authorities here in Johnson County have used drones and boats to aid in the search of Martinez, but have not been able to update his last known location around Harrison Street early Saturday morning. In Iowa City, Hernan Gutierrez, TV6 News. It was almost the perfect afternoon for some spring baseball here in downtown Davenport. However, the Mississippi River continues to wreak havoc. Portions of River Drive continue to be closed, making it kind of annoying and difficult to get down to the parking here at Modern Woodburn Stadium. And speaking of parking, a lot of that is still underwater, as you can see right behind me here. The team's owner says that this is the perfect example why the stadium needs a permanent bridge for fans to get inside the games. We got so lucky because the schedule had us going for our only two week road trip of the year at exactly the peak time of flooding. Mud and the smell of floodwaters linger in the parking lots of Modern Woodman Park, yet <laughs> fans can still hear and enjoy baseball in the Quad Cities. Summer has begun, the games are back, um, and it's super easy to get here. They're starting to clean up, and we're just really excited that summer has started. The ballpark put up temporary flood walls to keep out water and put up a ramp to get fans over the water leading up to the entrance. Team owner Dave Heller says it took some work to get concessions and other equipment in for the homestand. The city of Davenport did a fabulous job of protecting the park and making sure that no water got in. That was great. The challenge is, how do you get people in and out of the ballpark when the flood waters are so high? While this year the team was able to dodge major flooding concerns, it brings up a bigger issue. According to Heller, they have until opening day of 2025 to figure out a solution for getting fans in seats when flooding occurs or when trains block the entrance. But if we had been home during that period, we would have lost 12 home games. And our status as a minor league affiliated team would be threatened by MLB. Team officials are encouraging fans to use side streets because of the limited parking downtown. Floodwaters or not, Quad Cityans are glad to see their bandits on the diamond. And we were looking at the water going, they're never going to be able to play here. So they did an amazing job keeping the water out as much as they could to allow people to park. Those flood measures will continue to be in place here at Modern Woodman Park until the water recedes more. The River Bandits will continue their homestand against the Cedar Rapids Colonels through Sunday. That's really overwhelming, you know. I don't have a shop. I don't have a house. Behind me, the destruction left behind by an EF2 tornado confirmed by the National Weather Service in Kelowna, just off of Illinois Route 84. Businesses in the area now left picking up the pieces before yet another potential round of severe weather. They wanted to get what we could get out before the walls collapse even more with the wind or whatever. So we're just hoping that it gets by us and we don't have no more damage, but that's what we're praying for now. Milo Velos was able to get his race cars out after his tire shop collapsed due to Tuesday's tornado. This comes as he lost his house in a fire just three weeks ago. I mean, I don't know how much more I could take with the thing, you know. I mean, we lost all the memories, all pictures, you know. We lost our three dogs, and that was the hardest part. Across the street, Amber Reel started recording just as the roof of a neighboring gas station was ripped off by the storm. Oh, my God. I, I mean, we're lucky. I don't know. I look at all this, and I'm just, like, amazed that... Even my mailbox, when this, this sign this morning was sideways, but my mailbox is still scanning normal. For Velos, it'll be a long road to recovery. About 25 people helped him clear up what he could. I'm going to have to get a demo permit, and I'm going to start demoing it. And Unfortunately, it's nobody's fault. It's the act of God, so it's like you have to take care of it. In Kelowna, Hernan Gutierrez, TV6 News.